Hello everybody, and welcome back to part two of our tracing and exploring my little binder of old Pokemon cards. This time, I'll be doing some brushing sounds as well. is one of my makeup brushes that I don't use, so there's no problem with us touching it or using it on the binder. So last time, we ended with this page here. So let's see what we have next. Looks like we'll be starting with Starmie. This is one of Misty's main Pokemon. And he has 60 HP and recover and star freeze, which does 20 damage. Next up, we have Star U. He is only boosting. 40 HP, but he also has a move that does 20 damage, and for only one water energy, and that is slap. So Star is keeping it pretty simple here. Next up we have Tangle. I always thought he was funny with his little boots. The red that really stood out against the vines and everything. One thing that was really surprising to me was that Tiki ended up getting an evolution. But I always associated him as being somewhat of a counterpart to Jinx. But I guess Jinx got Smoochum. He has his signature bind, which does 20 damage, and poison powder, which does 20 as well. Now, both of these have the option to do an added effect. With bind, you can leave your opponent paralyzed. With poison powder, you can't leave them poisoned. I do appreciate that bind takes one less energy. You have the flexibility of using any type with that color of colorless secondary energy. We have this little angry boy, Voltorb here, with a nice little neon effect. He has a simple tackle as his move. I'm also almost surprised he doesn't get self destruct or something. But that's what I most associate him with. We have a very cute and radiant looking Vulpix here. His little tails. Little forehead fluff. His little feet. 
and those confuse red, which does 10 damage. And if you flip a coin, you get heads. Defending Pokemon. It's now confused. We have a Weedle up next. I always found Weedle. into because of his ability to poison. Caterpie is much more trainer friendly early on because you didn't need to burn through poison eels. And he has poison sting which does 10 damage with a chance to poison. We have some trainers, the Clefairy doll. I believe this has a similar role to substitute. It's like using the Pokemon doll in the game to escape. We have computer search. Cute little older looking computer. I'm sure for the time this card came out, it looked very high tech and futuristic. For this, you discard two other cards from your hand in order to search your deck for any card and put it in your hand. And with all of these searcher cards, you have to shuffle afterwards. We have a D Evolution Spray. Funky little shape here. I think the next page is going to be more trainers as well. But it's really cute to see the old trainer designs. We have a very intimidating imposter, Professor Oak here. Your opponent shuffles his or her hand into their deck, draws seven cards. I don't know if I have ever put him in my deck. It seems like a pretty random chance kind of card, unless they have more than seven cards already. We have the item finder. Discard two of the other cards from your hand in order to put a trainer card from your discard pile into your hand. So it's a nice recycling kind of card. We have just a simple lass here. One of the trainers you'd encounter. I think it's like youngster and lass or something. I don't think they have lads. This is definitely the age before the full art trainers. I would love to see them go back and make full arts for the Composter Oak. Pokemon Trader. And some of the more NPC like cards. We have Scoop Up. Looks like a very surprised Weedle. He's getting caught or called back to the Ball. Defender. This looks very similar to the, um, the supplements you can give your Pokemon, like the X attack and X defend. Energy, energy retrieval. Trade one of the other cards in your hand for up to two basic energy from your discard pile. Looks like that could be a very useful recycling card there. Just resource management. A full heal. Your active Pokemon is no longer asleep, confused, paralyzed, or poisoned. 
so this is very useful to keep on hand. We have the maintenance. Really interesting to think they'd be using robotics to maintain a Pokeball. Shuffle two of the other cards from your hand to the deck. Draw a card. It doesn't seem very kind. We have something like this, followed up by something like Bill here. You just get to draw two cards without a penalty. Here we have plus power, which I believe is a similar effect. Take X attack and he gains Pokemon Center. Remove all damage counters from all of your own Pokemon with damage counters on them. Discard all energy cards attached to these Pokemon. You definitely would have to use this strategically. Because you're going to be using up all your energies in order to heal. Definitely good if um, the opponent has moves that damage the benched Pokemon. Because then you'd really only be sacrificing maybe a few energies from your bench and some from your main. But it depends how you strategize around it. Pokemon Flute. If there's any Snorlaxes that need waking up, I suppose. Choose one basic Pokemon card from your opponent's discard pile. Put it onto his or her bench. That seems rather generous. I don't think I would use that. Top five cards from the top of your deck. Rearrange them as you like. It's a nice little information gathering card and could save you some some draws in order to get what you want. The real Professor Oak. Discard your hand and then draw seven cards. So that's a very good card. If you happen to to brick in your first hand, could be a good one to keep just for insurance. We have revives, looking like little hard candies here. Revives in the game definitely look more like gems to me. This looks like if it didn't come in a childproof bottle. You might be in danger. Super potion. I was always disappointed that the ones in the games didn't look this majestic and appealing. This looks like a fruit juice, or like a smoothie. Discard one energy card attached to one of your own Pokemon in order to remove up to four damage counters from that Pokemon. So I guess depending on how bad your team is looking and where your energies are, this could be better in some situations. This could be better in some situations. We have Bill, simply giving us two free cards. And energy removal, looking like a whirlpool here. This almost reminds me of that, um, one Pokemon movie featuring Manaphy and Fiuni. Choose one energy card attached to one of your opponent's Pokemon and discard it. Now we have some nice hollows on this page. The continuation of the little Weedle series of cards. Gust of Wind. Choose one of your opponent's benched Pokemon and switch it with their active Pokemon. It's a nice little card. We have the normal potion. 
portion here. Remove up to two damage counters from one of your Pokemon. This is unique because it doesn't require you to sacrifice any energy. We have Switch. Switch a benched Pokemon if you want, so if you're active. Nice way to get around the retreat cost. Clefable. Holographic card here. Absolutely beautiful. I do kind of miss the simplistic watercolory effects of the old holographics. Let's signature metronome to minimize. We have a flareon here. is a nice 60 damage, which back then, when I think Pokemon topped out at somewhere around 120 HP, that was a pretty big deal. We have Nidoqueen. Looking ready to square up here. She has a Mega Punch. Smooth damage for four energies and no added effects. We have a holographic Snorlax. We have a Pokemon Power Thick Skinned Body Slam. Four energy, colorless cost, with a chance to paralyze. File plume. Holographic. With Petal Dance. And Pokemon Power. Is gone with their little baby hair in the pouch. With the fetch, which allows you to draw a card. And Comet Punch. She looks ready to run away from me in the Safari Zone. I always have the hardest time. Catching Kangaskhan there. This is a pretty grass type heavy page. Vaporeon here. I'm always surprised in these old cards how different the evolutions look. This is a very fishy, uh, like seal looking Vaporeon, or is it usually kind of looks like an aquatic cat or an aquatic fox, in my opinion? But I do like the little bubbles in the background. The Butterfree. That's one of the Pokemon that whenever I hear the name, I can hear the call. Not sure if they have a Gigantamaxed Butterfree card out yet, but I'll be excited to see that artwork. We have Dodrio. One thing that I really like about Dodrio is um, how each of the heads has a different expression, so they're all thinking separately. 
so this is, this is a Pokemon that I kind of slept on when I originally played through the, the um, like Fire Red and Leaf Green. I was always someone that raised a Pidgey, but going back, I've been trying to play with Pokemon that I never raised before. Using a Dodrio makes things so much easier. Knowing Dry Attack, the chance to like burn, paralyze, and freeze, and a pretty high stab attack. It's pretty awesome. It really sweeps the field and saved my butt multiple times in my playthrough. I haven't, it was a cute toy. I definitely like it looks like he's on an island just chilling, either at sunset or sunrise. We have Pharaoh here, or Firo, with a drill peck and agility. All these little streaks. Looks like he must be going pretty fast. He's probably a few agilities in. Loom here. It almost looks like there's poisonous gas in the air around it. That's the nature poison powder. And foul odor, which does 20 damage. Very dynamic. My favorite move names. <clears throat> Pardon me. Bone Meringue, which does 30 times the outcome of two coins that you're able to flip. And Call for Friends. Which is a nice way to get more um, fighting type into your hand. Nidorina, which surprisingly knows supersonic. I'm not sure if that's a move that it can learn in the games. I've never taught one that. And double kick, which I know it can learn. And then we have Parasect. This is definitely one I never had on my team. I know it gets Spore, which is a really good move, because I believe that's a 100% chance of um, putting the opponent to sleep, but I could never get past its eerie little backstory, where it's basically a zombie. I always thought these were glasses as a kid. I don't know why, but kind of reminded me of glasses. Even had glasses as a kid, so I I would know from reference even. <laughs> Up next we have Persian. Looks like he's taking a little bit of a siesta here under the tree. Scratch and pounce. Looks like he's traded some of his money loving ways. No longer has payday, anything like that. Rapidash. The thing that I find interesting about this card is how little of the Rapidash is actually shown. It's like they only paid for a bust up and not a full body. Majestic and cool looking. Has stomp, agility. Have ride on over here. Very cool looking. And I've gotta say, I really like ride on, but I'm not the biggest fan of Rhyperior. Just feels a little too different for me. Although 
I do like an electrifier. It has a signature horn attack. And ram. This is four energy, fifty damage move. We have up next is Taurus with Stomp and a Rampage. He looks like he's ready to tussle. Very vibrant looking weeping bell. Just chilling out on a branch in the forest. He has poison powder, which is a smooth tent with a chance to poison. And a razor leaf, which I believe he's pretty well known for as well. Outside of when he's attacking James. for family. This is one of my absolute favorite cards from these old sets. Keep on. It just really captures the character and the story behind it. It's just out in the desert looking up at the stars. It's a really sad card. I think it's one of the best in terms of interpretation of the character. We have Evie here. Looks to be chasing some butterflies. Once again, very interesting take on Evie and the evolutions. He's just extremely fluffy. His little floof was turned up, he would almost be consistent with the Gigantamax TV's signature quick attack and tail tail wag. They chose not to use tail whip. And last but not least on this page here, we have Execute. I do also like the crispness of this artwork. Although they all look a little bit eerie to me. Yes, hypnosis. And a leech seed. I do believe we should have enough pages left to do a part three, if you folks would be interested. So let me know if um, you guys would like to see another video of some old Pokemon card tracing. And if you like the brush sound. More of the back of the brush tracing and tapping sounds. Or if you preferred just the hand sounds. I'm always interested in wanting to know what you guys like best so that I can make the most relaxing videos possible. Thank you guys for watching. Great day or night. And I will see you in the next video.